Welcome to Intro to Logic. In this video, we're going to go over our first set of practice problems. Let's begin. Consider this argument. Notice that before we begin, it's written into sequent form. We have a bracket which separates the premises on the left hand side and the conclusion on the right hand side. And now we can write out the argument. We draw a scope line, then we write our assumptions or premises which in this case is if t then s and not not t. And then we write our conclusion at the bottom that we're trying to derive, which in this case is s. So now we have to ask ourselves, using the rules we've learned so far, what can we do with premise 1 and 2? And keep in mind, we know of modus ponens, modus tollens, the rule of assumption, and double negation. These are the four rules that we can use to prove s. So the first thing that hopefully you notice is that we can drop two negations using the rule double negation and derive t. And you'll write 2, the line that we used, and the rule that we used, which in this case is double negation. And now we can use t to derive s. And we do this with the rule modus ponens. So we'll write lines 1, 3, modus ponens. And modus ponens says that if we have a conditional and the antecedent of that conditional, then we can derive the consequent of that conditional, which in this case is the conclusion we're trying to derive, S. Here's another example. Once again, we have a sequent form for the argument. Here's another example. Once again, we have the argument written into sequent form. We have our premises on the left-hand side and our conclusion on the right-hand side. And the first thing we're going to do is draw a scope line and write our assumptions, which in this case is um, first premise, not not r. Second premise, if m, then not r. And third premise, if not m, then p. And then we'll write our conclusion that we're trying to derive at the bottom, which will be not, not, p. Okay, so the first thing you want to ask yourself, as always, is what can we do with our premises? What rules can we use on any of the premises? And one of the first things that should pop out is that whenever you have a double negation, you can take that away using the rule of double negation. So let's try that we can get R from line 1 and DN. And I just noticed that we forgot to write an A over here. We should have three A's for the three assumptions. And so we've, so far we've derived line R, or line 4 and letter R. And now we want to ask ourselves, what can we do with letter R, if anything? And it looks like, oh shoot, I'm an idiot. Let's look at another example. Here's another example. Once again, we have an argument written out into sequent form. On the left-hand side of the bracket, we have our premises, and on the right-hand side, we have our conclusion. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a scope line and then write our assumptions, which in this case is not not r, if m, then not r, and if not m, then p. And then we'll write our conclusion at the bottom, which in this case will be not not p. All right, so the first thing we want to ask ourselves is what can we do with these three assumptions? What rules can we use on any of the lines? And one of the first things that might always jump out is if we have two negations, we can always add or take away two negations from any sentence letter. Um, so let's try that. We can write R using line 1 and DN. And now that we have R, we could ask ourselves, is there anything we can do with R? And it turns out there's actually nothing more we can do with the letter R. 
Um, the only other place we see it is in premise two. <clears throat> and we can't use it for modus ponens because it's not the antecedent. It looks like the only way you could use R is if we had the negation of not R, which is not not R. We could use that for modus tollens. So we actually didn't need to do line four. But this is a good example of cases where you might end up having more lines than you need in your argument, and that's okay. You can just leave line four, and we may not end up using it, and there's no need to erase it. Um, this is just part of the practice of doing logic. Ideally, we want as few of lines as possible, but your argument is never wrong for having an extra line as long as you use the rules correctly. So don't worry about that. Rather, um, it looks like we can go back to using line one and line two and derive not m with modus tollens. So we'll write line one, two, and mt. Notice that modus tollens says if we have a conditional and the negation of the consequent, which in this case would be not not r, and we have it right up here in line one, we can derive the negation of the antecedent. And so that's how we get not m on line five. So now that we have not m, we can use that with line three and the rule modus ponens. So we derive p from three, five, and mp. And keep in mind that modus ponens says that if we have a conditional and the antecedent of that conditional, we can derive the consequent of that conditional. And that's how we get to line six with p. And so now we just have one more step to get to not not p. Using line six and double negation, we can add two negation signs to p and derive not not p. And that's how we do this proof. For lines one through five, take a minute to ask yourself what is the negation of each sentence. If you need to, pause the video and then start it again. So for number one, what is the negation of not s? The negation is not not s. Notice that we just take the original sentence, which is not s, and we add a negation in front of it. For two, what's the negation of t? Not t. How about line three? What's the negation of the sentence if m then n? Right, it would be not if m then n. And notice that we keep our parentheses because the parentheses show us that this whole conditional counts as a single sentence and we're negating over that entire conditional not just over the antecedent. How about line four? What's the negation of not if p then q? Not not if p then q. And lastly for number five, what's the negation of if not s then not t? Not if not s, then not t. And notice that we have to throw in some parentheses here, otherwise we would end up having a sentence that looks like if not not s, then not t, which does not mean the same thing as not if not s, then not t. Now I grant that we've had to use the word not a lot in the last few sentences, and it may be a little bit confusing when talking about it, but just go back over how to use negations, do a few more practice problems if you have to, um, and in no time you'll really start to get the hang of talking about negations and double negations. For our last practice problem, consider the following argument. I will be hungry if I skip lunch. If I do not skip lunch, then I went out with Bob. I am not hungry, so I went out with Bob. Write it into symbolic notation and prove it. So the first thing that we want to do is substitute each sentence with a sentence letter. The sentence I will be hungry can be substituted with an H, I skip lunch with an S, and I went out with Bob with a B. So for our first sentence we have I will be hungry if I skip lunch. We know that this is an ant or a conditional. <clears throat> we know that this is a conditional because it's an if sentence. And we know that the sentence, I skip lunch, is the antecedent of the conditional because it's the if part of the sentence. So we have if s, then h as our first assumption. For our second assumption, we have if I do not skip lunch, then I went out with Bob, which would be if not s, then b. For our third assumption, we have I am not hungry, so not h. 
And for our conclusion, we have I went out with Bob, which is represented with the letter B. So now to prove this argument, we need to draw a scope line and write our assumptions. Our first assumption, if S, then H. Second assumption, if not S, then B. Third assumption, not H. And then let's write our conclusion at the bottom, which is B. All right, so now we want to ask ourselves, what can we do with these three assumptions? And it's always a good place to ask if there's anything we can do with a single sentence letter, not H. And there is something we can do. Um, using line 1, we can derive not S with 1, 3 modus tollens, because modus tollens says that if we have a conditional and the negation of the consequent, we can derive the negation of the antecedent, which in this case is not S. Now we can ask ourselves, is there anything we can do with not S? And it turns out that there is. Notice that on line 2 we have a conditional with not S as the antecedent. So we can combine line 2 and line 4 to derive B, which is the conclusion we're trying to get. So you'd write 2, 4, modus ponens, and there you have it, B. This is a valid argument. This has been an Intro to Logic video on practice problems number one. Be sure to keep on practicing and always feel free to email if you have any questions.